Welcome to Zombie Tactics again. Today, uh, this is the third part of the ongoing shotgun series. As we go along here in these sort of little several minute snippets, you'll learn more about shotguns than you ever wanted to know for anti zombie and self defense deployment. Anyway, uh, the last video had, among other things, to do with what kind of barrel should be on your shotgun, and I recommended barrels of 18 and a half to 20 inches for home defense, self defense, anti zombie deployment. With good reason. However, my uh, my loyal subscribers, my very loyal subscribers, keep me um, keep me honest. And one of them one of them uh, wrote me a PM, and I, I I thought it was cool enough that I should print it out because it brings up the topic of today's video. <clears throat> Dear Zombie Tactics, man, you are so awesome, dude. You are so much better than. Nutton Fancy and all those other YouTube guys. I love this part. Um, anyway, in your last video, you talked about the barrels on shotguns. I have seen shotguns advertised with rifled barrels and smooth bore barrels. You did not explain the difference, so what's the deal, man? Again, you are totally awesome, so much better than nothing fancy, and all those other YouTube guys signed Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris, ladies and gentlemen, and I I, I didn't even make that up. So we're gonna talk about uh, the difference between a rifled barrel and a uh, a smoothbore barrel today for Mr. Norris and the rest of you, and uh, it goes a little bit something like this. Okay, so I'm flying in a picture here of uh, that I took of a of a, the inside of a handgun barrel. Specifically, in this case, it's a 40 caliber handgun, and you'll see these kind of spiraling little grooves that are cut into the inside of the barrel. That's called rifling, and it's actually what makes a rifle a rifle. It was one of the uh, greatest advances in firearm technology to ever existed, probably next to gunpowder. Uh, and it makes a great deal of difference in the way that a bullet comes out the end of the barrel. As that barrel, as that bullet comes out of the end of the barrel, it spins and twists, and it imparts uh, a spin and a twist that stabilizes the bullet or the projectile uh, at, as it goes down range. That gives it um, a longer range and greater accuracy with greater velocity over that range. That's why you use a rifled barrel in a handgun or a rifle. Most shotguns, however, use. We'll throw in some video here. Uh, here's a shot of a 20 gauge shotgun barrel, a smooth bore barrel. And to explain why, we're going to have to go to um, the tabletop so I can pick apart a uh, shotgun round for just a second. So here we go. Well, on the table here for reference, I've got a, uh, a cut apart shotgun shell. In this specific case, these are noble uh, police rounds. And uh, if we take the shot, gun shell apart, we'll find, and by the way, I've sort of neutered this by removing all gunpowder. Uh, the primer's still active, but that's not going to hurt anybody in this case. You'll find that in the shotgun shell, a uh, pretty typical one, you've got some kind of wadding. In this case, it consists of a two-piece plastic affair, and that would be put together in the shotgun shell like this. The wadding would go on top of the gunpowder and the primer. The shot, in this case, 12 rounds of buckshot, double aught in this case would go on top of that, eh. and then the other part of the wadding assembly that they've got here. And when the shotgun fires, this comes firing out. This plastic wad gets broken into four pieces, and these twelve shotgun uh, buckshot shells come flying out the end of the tube, and then also what's this little plastic wadding which kind of helps to push them out the barrel. Well, that's typically how that operates. If you have a smooth bore shotgun, what will happen is these will come out of the shotgun barrel fairly uh, in a column and they will then begin to spread apart in a pretty predictable manner. And that's because there isn't really much force operating them on them except the fact that they got shoved down the end of a barrel. Now. As this goes down uh, the range, uh, pretty much within 
uh, a few, uh, a couple of feet, they stick together and they're essentially one large bullet. As they get down the range further, they're going to make a pattern about the size of your fist, then a pattern about the size of your chest, and so on. And that's pretty effective. Uh, when you use a slug, that slug, and we'll use this as an example, that just kind of stays as a single bullet, and it goes down range, so on. Well, if you've got a rifled barrel, and you can kind of see this, that rifling is going to impart a twist to that column of shot going out the barrel, and now you've got either centrifugal or centripetal centripetal forces causing those rounds to spin around and fly apart much faster. That's not a good thing. And here's the problem. If those rounds fly apart too fast because of the circular motion imparted by that rifled barrel, it loses its effectiveness at longer ranges much quicker and it becomes a much less accurate weapon. That's kind of a bad thing. Now, most of the time you can, ha you can count on a shotgun being a pretty decent weapon, even with buckshot in it, at 35, maybe 50 yards, maybe m much more than that, maybe even up to 100 yards with the right rounds. There are some special rounds that confer that advantage to you. But if that spin is taking place and those pellets fly apart much faster, you get what's called kind of a donut effect or a ring effect, where all of a sudden, instead of a, a clump of pellets coming out and forming a wider clump and a wider clump they for, they sort of start to form a ring where almost it's almost like what you're aiming at you're not going to hit at all it just goes all the way around it or you get fewer target you get fewer pellets on target at longer ranges so for that reason you want to try and keep that weapon effective at as great a distance as you possibly can and you don't want to use a rifled barrel for your standard anti-zombie, self-defense, home defense shotgun. That begs the question though, well, why is there a rifled barrel? Well, there are shotgun rounds, shotgun shells that are called sabots or sabos. I don't care about the pronunciation. I hear people argue that all over the place. And they are manufactured to be much more like a traditional uh, bullet that would come out of the end of a handgun or a rifle they actually look much more like a bullet. They don't look like a, a shotgun slug. They look like a bullet. And they do take advantage of that twist that's imparted to the round, and it does give them greater velocity over a longer range and greater accuracy out to a greater range. The problem is you lose flexibility that way. If you have a rifled barrel, really the only thing you ought to be shooting out of it are those special sabot or sabo rounds. By keeping the smooth bore barrel, you gain the greatest amount of flexibility because you can use almost everything else that would go in that shotgun. There are special shotgun slugs that are designed to be accurate out to a hundred yards. Brenke makes some stuff that's great along those lines. There are special shotgun shells for uh, buckshot that have a special shot cup that keeps that clump together a further distance down range. All kinds of different things. Tear gas rounds and flare rounds and all kinds of things. You want to be able to have your, uh, your anti-zombie gun be as flexible as possible. This doesn't, in my mind, reduce its, its effectiveness. Uh, the military uses shotguns with smooth bores. The police use shotguns with smooth, smooth bores. The sabo sabot thing with the rifled barrel, that's really much more of a, of a hunting uh, application for hunting large game at greater distances. And so I hope I've clarified this point for Mr. Norris and the rest of my loyal subscribers. We'll see you again on next time on uh, Zombie Tactics. Bye-bye for today.